all right everybody welcome to Hannon adventures I am here at Kings Mountain battleground just what I told everybody on my Twitter account I am so fortunate and lucky enough to live only 15 minutes from here so I'm going to show you a lot of cool stuff in the Civil War in history so we are going down the path here Hey, how y'all doing? Good. Pretty good. But it is a good trail to walk on. It is concreted. If you're a big history buff like I am, I love history, but this area here was one of the pinnacle major points of the Civil War. On the very top point, you had the red coats from the bottom coming up. I mean, they were, I'm hearing something. Okay. But, uh, I mean, they were face-to-face -face shooting. I mean, going uphill behind trees. I mean, but if you ever get to come to North Carolina, you must come here. It is 1.5 mile hike. It, is, it makes a complete circle, which you're gonna see today. This vlog might be a little long, but it is well worth it. All right, we're coming up on the first, first sign here, which I was telling you about. See, talking about fighting in the forest. There wasn't no concrete roads or nothing like that here. They were fighting face to face behind trees. And, uh, but let me get to the next pinnacle point. I don't want this vlog to be two hours long, so let me get to the next pinnacle point and be right back. Called the Chronicle Marker in honor of Major William Chronicle. Uh, over the years, we had 
issues of weathering, or vandalism as well, where people would chip off pieces of a marker as a souvenir that they had been through the battlefield. Obviously, in the National Park Service, we do not like when people do that. Uh, they had to put a replacement marker here 100 years later in 1914 to show what was written on the original. Um, but this is the second oldest war memorial in the entire country. This shows you how important locals believe this battle was. Right here in this area, there are four markers to the South Fork Boys. You have the two Chronicle markers here. The marker up on the, halfway up the hillside there is where Chronicle was mortally wounded. And a little bit further up is a marker to the man who took over for him, Frederick Cambrai. So there's a lot of local remembrance before this ever became part. Are there any questions so far? There is an activity in the Junior Ranger booklet about the Chronicle marker. What would you do to try to prevent that kind of thing? That was pretty cool, everybody. I happened to walk up on a uh, one of the park rangers telling a story about the lowest and uh, our local our local fighters, which they were mostly from Belmont, uh, trying to keep the enemy from escaping. And uh, that road is called uh, Colonial Road, which goes straight to Charlotte. So it's very interesting, so cool. I mean, there's so much. And uh, that rock she was talking about. <coughs> oh, man. Very old. Uh, over th uh, 300 years old, I think. But there's so much history around this mountain here. It's just so very cool, so beautiful. If you've never been here, if you get a chance to come to North Carolina, and like I say, if you like history, you have to visit this area. Alright. Alright. We're going to go to the next pinnacle spot of this area. I'm going to turn this around and let y'all see some views, okay? It is very humid out here today. So if you hear me, if you hear me heavy breathing, I apologize. And out of breath, I ain't, I ain't walked this in a long time. And it's, like I say, I'm doing this for y'all. It's a mile and a half, but it's really humid. It's over 90 degrees today, but I start my new job tomorrow. So I want to make sure I get this today. That's what it's talking about. Shoot tree to tree. They fell uh, from tree to tree up to the summit. I stood behind one tree and fired until the bark was nearly knocked off. My eyes was pretty well filled with it. One fellow shaded my pretty clothes for his bullet took a piece of my gun stock. Before I was aware of it, I found myself apparently between my own regiment and the enemy. Uh, I judged by seeing the paper the wigs wore in their hats, and the pine twigs the toys wore in theirs. So, it's pretty cool. Just imagine if you was back then, you was a young 16, 17 year old, having to fight through these trees and woods and weeds, and you got people firing at you within you know, 100 yards, 50 yards from you, shooting, shooting at you, bullets flying everywhere, muskets. I only could imagine, I couldn't imagine.
they do have plenty of places to sit if you have to but we ain't doing no sitting no 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 I don't want to be here no three hours and I'm actually walking pretty fast faster than normal Huh? Taking pictures. Oh yeah, I do a YouTube channel, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> you better, you better me out. You my I'll get you out. I'm sweating already. Woo! It's a good walk though. And uh, there's actually a good crowd here today to be a Sunday. But you know what? Bring some water with you. Uh, I was stupid. I didn't bring no water with me. How crazy is that? A mile and a half. In this humidity, I'm gonna be very parched by the time I get done. All right, we got another location coming up here. Let's see what this is. All right, be your own officer. When we encounter the enemy, don't wait for a word of command. Let each of you be your own officer. Do the very best you can. If in the woods, shelter yourselves and give them Indian play. Advance from tree to tree and killing and disabling all you can. That was Isaiah Shelby, Tennessee Patriot leader. One by one, rough woodsman from beyond the Blue Ridge plunged through the forest and up the slope you see before you, up there. Any warfare had hardened them into individual fighters, not much prone to take directions from others. And like he is, they hollered out loud as they aimed and fired, dashed and ducked. Although the tiny forms were far away, seemingly deep in mountain strongholds, these Whigs took seriously Major Ferguson's threat to cross the mountains, hang their leaders, and lay waste to their country with fire and sword, enough to tramp over the Blue Ridge twice to stop them. And there's uh, Isaiah Shelby there. So they went. They were heading that way, which we will be up there eventually. But they didn't have no nice uh, concrete path. They had to go through briars, weeds, bushes to fight their way up to the top. And we're heading that way, the easy way. They had the hard way coming from there. So you think about it. Coming through that, coming up. Bullets flying at you. You firing back. Man, it just gets my blood pumping. I love history. It's just amazing. You know how we do our fighting now to then. I mean, my gosh, they would line up in front of each other. Ten yards in front of each other. Bow. Take a shot. Bam, shoot. While they loading up. The other ones. Bam. You know, it's a miracle if anybody survived. Because if you didn't get hit, God was with you because it wasn't, like I say, it was 20 yards from each other. But here's some more. While we get to the next stop, here's some more of the beauty. Yeah, sun behind the clouds, that's a good thing. Woohoo! 
All right, we got another information here. All right, this is the charging cold steer. Patriot Militants face crown trained troops. Everyone know, knew Colonel Sevier's rugged front steerman for the long ride from a marksmanship and their touchy eagerness for a brawl, but no experienced military man of that day expected men armed only with hunting weapons to be able to face and defeat real soldiers trained to use by a net. It never happened until Keynes Mountain. Three times long hunters from east of Tennessee charged up this mountainside. Once then, twice, they were chased back down by toys wielding 17-inch long bayonets. Somehow, Sevier's patriots found the courage to stop running, turn around, and go back up against that fearsome cold steel one last time. That was Camden, August the 16th, 1780. Every man at Kings Mountain, Whig or Tory, knew that only six weeks ago, Patriot Militants had ever been overwhelmed in the Battle of Canada, South Carolina. Their well-drilled crown troops had used standard European tactics and cold steel to send the Whigs running for their lives. Wow. Pretty cool. I know I'm going to be throwing a lot of information out on here, but it excites me. I love history. And hopefully, after this vlog... We, I, I'm lucky to live 15 minutes from here, and we have another one where a Civil War battle f was fought. The, uh, oh man, it's in South Carolina. It doesn't slip my mind now. But, uh, cow pens. So hopefully we'll go to it. All right, I'm gonna stay on the main trail. You can, there's a monument of Hoover, one of the fighters. But you gotta walk all the way up that way. We're gonna stay on the main trail. But one day I'm off. I'll get to South Carolina. It's about 30 minutes from where I live. It's another battleground where the Civil War was fought. So hopefully I'll be getting it. All right, I'm gonna shut up for a minute while I catch my breath and let you see the sights. Up here we go. Up here we go. Makes you almost feel like how they felt climbing this mountain. The only difference is I'm not carrying a, a hunting rifle and all the gear on me like they were oh hoppy toe bunch of them that was a bunch of them. high now oh. right here drive the enemy the ridge ahead was craggy and rough and covered with flame and smoke Campbell's Virginia regiment had drawn a tough and bloody assignment to lead the first strike against the Tories they were the first to close with the enemy the first to hear the thunder of the drums and the first to face the terror of the bad gnats coming downhill. Some patriots stood their ground and were run through. Most broke and ran. The Lord to stop the charge at the foot of this hill. William Campbell stood halfway between his foe and his own men, now on the run, as he saw his neighbors make tracks for the next ridge. He shouted, Halt! Return, my brave fellows, and you will drive the enemy immediately. One by one, the Virginians slowed, turned about, 
and rally attack again. Wow. So, William Campbell, you know, he taught them guys into coming back. Even though their homes were uh, homes in the Virginia mountains were far removed from the plantations, this regiment did include African Americans, three free men of color, and a colonel servant, John Brady. Face to face, he had urged each man to do his duty. Wow. And right here is a monument in honor of the three known African American patriots and others who participated in the Battle of Kings Mountain Isaiah S. Bowman, John Brody, Andrew Ferguson. They died right here. So, that is awesome. October the 7th, 2016 is when they put the marker here. That's awesome. They get notarized. Alright, onward we go. A little higher we go. Americans in red coats. British war drums bellowed the alarm as 120 battle hardened veterans in red took their places in line here. They were the first to face the Whig woodsmen moving up through the trees below. Whew. Mountain bayonets as they had in countless drills before they charged the riflemen. British hopes to end the six year long rebellion rested on Americans such as these. Leaders in London thought that a backbone of provincial Soldiers could set the example, training Tory military to march and fight properly. Together, the Americans in red coats and local loyalties might be reestablished crowns controlling the south. Ah, uh, interesting. So they will come from all this area here. All right, and up here is the the main monument. There it is. We have made it to the top. Oh my gosh. Yes. Made it to the top. Yeah. This is the main monument right here. This is the, the, I'm looking at how you say that word. I can't say it. <laughs> but this is the main thing right here. This is the very top of King's Mountain. Here the tide of battle turned in favor of the American colonists. Here on the day of October 1780, the British forces commanded by Patrick and Ferguson were met and totally defeated by Campbell, Shelby, Williams, Cleveland, Severe, Severe, and their heroic followers from Virginia the Carolinas and Tennessee. Right here is where they beat Ferguson and the Redcoats. So you tell on his battleground, Colonel James Williams, Major William Chronicle, John Maddox, William Edison, First Lieutenants was Ridge Bowen, Thomas McCullough, William Blackburn, Robert Edison, Second Lieutenants, John Beatty, Andrew Evansman, Humberson Lyon, James Curry, James Laird, Nathaniel Guest, Nathaniel Dryden, James Phillips, and privates were William Rabb, John Boyd, David Duff, Henry Heinegger, William Watson, Arthur Patterson, and Preston Gofor. They're the ones that won the Keys Mountain Battle for us. So, and just think about it. They foul up this mountain. Okay? They fought coming up this mountain and woods, trees, I mean all this mess fighting their way up the mountain. It's unbelievable. But you gotta love the stuff like that like me, I guess. 
But now we're heading back that uh now we're heading back down the other side. Alright, right here's a another to honor Colonel Asbury Coward, soldier, patriot, educator. That's a little honor to him. Alright, we got another little info here. I'm sweating like a stuck pig, I'm telling you. Woo! I don't know what I was thinking, not bringing water. So this is right here, the Loyal Carolina Men. So as soon as Charleston fell, there was a procl proclamation for all to come forward. Peace and pardon should be granted. Vast numbers flocked in and submitted, some thought through fear, some through willingness, and others perhaps through a hope that all things would settle down and war cease. Fighting enemies on all sides. Major Ferguson called for a defensive ring facing outward along this quarter mile ridge. 90% of the Tories who fought here did not wear the King's red coat in the war torn Carolina backcountry in 1780. Allegiances were bitter, confused, and sons fluid. Some men did switch sides, even in the heat of battle. After all, the foes firing uphill at them were their own neighbors and brothers. Huh. Ain't that wild? Man. Yeah. That'd be awful, you know, sitting there firing, shooting uphill, and you firing at people that could be, in, you know, as your neighbors. I mean, well, that's what happens in a in war, I guess. But, well, I see another one monument, but I'm going to turn around and let you get some more views, okay? I'm hearing people talking and laughing. The only thing is, you know, I, I used to love running in the woods. There's just an urge just to keep run, just to take off running and just run down that mountain. Like they, like they had to back in them days. That's just an urge. I'm not stupid. <laughs> but, uh, it's just a little urge. All right. What we got here? All right, caught in the crossfire. Hard pressed on every side, Ferguson's men fell back to their camp, which lay in the saddle of the ridge you see just ahead. As some Tories tried to surrender, bullets continued to pour into the ranks from all directions. Too late, they saw they were pinned down in deadly crossfire. Patriots rounded up Tory prisoners. Remember how British Colonel Tarkin had ordered rebel prisoners taken at nearby wax halls to be killed in cold blood. Even as the heat of the battle cooled atop Kings Mountain, few Tories were shown mercy. Man. The cursed rebels came upon us, killed, and took every soul. And so, my dear friends, I bid you farewell, for I am started to the warm country. Last entry in a loyalty diary found on the battlefield. Wow. I don't know what they got down here because this usually goes all the way around. I don't know what they're doing down here. I think they got it blocked off. Maybe it's a new monument they're putting up. I don't know. Well, everybody, I have no idea what we got right here. 
but I got my path blocked. So I guess that means we have to, I have to turn around and go back. That's pretty cool though. I don't know what it is, but that's pretty cool. Unless this path, unless this path in, I swear I thought this thing went all the way around. Huh. All right. I have no idea, but it looks like I'm turning around going back. I swear. You was able to go on around. They must be doing some work on that. I think that was there before. I think they're doing some cleaning on it, maybe. Oh, well. All right, when I get to something else, I mean, I'm heading back now the same way I came. I'll get someone new, and I don't understand that. That don't make sense, man. That's a long walk I've done to have to... That's a long walk for me to have to turn turn around to get to the other side. Uh, I'll be back here, buddy. All right, I got it now, everybody. All traffic. It's gonna allow us to walk through the grass, so. That's pretty cool, though. So that's a, another memorial. They must be cleaning it. But they're letting us walk this way. get back to the other side of the path so that's awesome that's pretty cool too all right good I didn't want to have to walk all the way back to the beginning and go the other way that would have really stunk all right we got another memorial here all right this right here is the honor of lieutenant colonel colonel James Hawthorne commander of colonel William Hills regiment York County troops in the Battle of Keynes Mountain, October the 7th, 1780. Colonel Hill, having been disabled by wounds, received in a formal engagement. Colonel James Hawthorne. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Ah, downhill, much better than uphill. <laughs> got set more mine but uh, I really hope you enjoying this video out there I'm walking this mile and a half in the humidity and heat so please please smash that like button if you don't mind if you haven't subbed to my channel I do all kinds of stuff I do stuff like this I do fishing vlogs, father daughter, I do gaming, I do a little bit of everything. I just have fun and I love uh, doing my YouTube, so I just hope everybody's having a fantastic Sunday. I am enjoying my day before I have to start my new job tomorrow. All right, let's see what we got here. We got a new one. Oh, this right here is where, uh, Right here is where uh, Major at Major Ferguson falls. A chaos of battle roared along the ridge top, piercing the din of gunfire and wounded men's groans. Ferguson's silver whistle shrilled, rallying his toys. Two horses were shot out from under him. Ferguson seemed to be everywhere at once. While he was charging and slashing at the advancing Whigs, eight or nine rifle balls struck the Major at the same time. His unusual checkered duster had made him an easy target. Ferguson fell from the saddle, his boot caught in the stirrup. Fierce fight and continue as Captain Randy Pester assumed command, but not for long. Minutes later, the king, look at back it, back it, back it, back it, back it. King's men were laying down their arms as white flags fluttered here and there amid the swirling gun smoke. For stunned loyalists untangled the major's boot for the stirrup and propped him against a tree out of the line of fire. There were men on both sides gathered to watch a legend die. There he is. Patrick Skifferskin, age 36, served his king with a professional distinction as a soldier for 20 years in Europe. The West Indies in North America, renowned as the best marksman in the British Army, 
He was a dynamic militia recruiter and trainer in the Carolinas. His defeat here signified the end of a British hoax to win the war using Americans loyal to the crown. The son of Scottish gentry, Major Ferguson, was the only Briton to fight at King's Mountain. Hmm. Buggy, buggy, buggy. Buggy, buggy. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. I apologize, everybody. I'm burning up. Oh, okay. Right here is the, uh, the marker she was talking about. And see right here. We'll go down here and we'll look at this. Woo. Man. Man. I'm just imagining how to come up this mountain. With all, all this in here. This tablet marks the spot where Colonel Frederick Hambrick was wounded. Okay. Man. So he was coming up through here. And he was wounded right here. Man, he was he was right there at the top. I mean he was right there at it. He got wounded right here, but he was so close to being at the top. Oh gosh. I'm getting my workout today. It's like a little valley right there. Look, pile of rocks. I can't remember. I think that's where somebody's buried at. Up under all them rocks. Under the ground, you know. I could be wrong, but let me get to it. Oh, look how those rocks are stacked. Look at there. <laughs> to the memory of Colonel Patrick of Ferguson, 71st Regiment Highland Light Infantry, born in, in Scotland in 1744, killed October 7, 1780 in action at Kings Mount while in command of the British troops, a soldier of military disting, distinction and of honor. This, oh, gone, bud. It's from the citizens of the United States of America in token of their appreciation of the bonds of friendship in place between them and the citizens of the British Empire. He read October 7th, 1930. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we got good bonds. I want to get to the UK one day so bad. I want to go to Alton, uh, Alton Parks, Alton Tire Music Park. Maybe I get lucky to meet Sean from Theme Park Worldwide. That'd be pretty cool. Woo! Back uphill again. How is that? So peaceful out here. Hear everything. I think I'm getting close to back to the beginning now. 
we got another sign here. America, victors. Imagine hundreds of men dressed more or less alike, hearts still pounding from the fever battle, milling around this hill, this hillside as the sun sets. Wigs of Tories both slept on wet, cold ground amid the groans of wounded dying men. The rebel colonels decided to leave here the next morning for they knew, for they know that Cornwallis is not far away. Messengers ride out to carry word of victory to George Washington. Three weeks later, the good news finally reaches Philadelphia. By then, all these patriot regiments like evening mist have completely disappeared into the inner southern forest. Yet, for these men, and for the patriot cause after King's Mountain, nothing would be ever the same. Uh, the Battle of King's Mountain blessed Whig John Severe with fame and political good fortune for the rest of his life. Six times he was elected governor of Tennessee. John Severe also served in the United States Congress. Many other Whig leaders such as Shelby, Cleveland, and Winston enjoyed long success in frontier politics. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I'm about to trip now. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh yeah, I can hear a car now, so I know I'm right there at it. All right, now it says Americans vanquished. In these woods, days Tories hurriedly buried their fallen comrades using only logs and rocks. Dr. Rizal Johnson of the New Jersey province spent the night with the several hundred men with wounds, tending friend in full light. At dawn, a long line of prisoners stumbled away under guard. In a few weeks, some would be paroled. Many would escape and return to the king's ranks. A few judged notorious plunderers would be hanged and none would see themselves or the king's cause as they had before King's Mountain, nor were their leaders in London. Oh. All righty then. Yes, I can see the uh, building. Oh man, I left my phone in the car. Oh my gosh, my phone will be darn mailed the time I get back. That's not good. What a time to think about it when I get right here at the, yeah, cause I didn't put it in this pocket. I left it plugged up. Glad I remember to get the keys. But I hope everyone enjoyed this vlog. And uh, I enjoyed doing it. I'm burning up, I'm hot, I'm sweaty. I'm gonna get home in the air conditioning, get something to drink. But uh, I hope y'all have a fantastic Sunday night. Please hit the like button. If you ain't subscribed to me, please subscribe to me. I'm gonna give you this last minute or two of me leaving here. Come back and see me.